Welcome to another video in my Tailspire Beta Tips and Tricks series. Today I wanted to go over a few things that as a dungeon master you are going to have to be aware of and want to explain to your players so that when you actually use Tailspire in a game, at least in this current version, this is the kinds of things that you will need to do in order to actually be able to run your game properly. So, let's go ahead and head in with the begin. Uh, we're going to go into my test campaign and play. And here we are in the, the map that you, if you watched the last video, you would have seen this map. In the last video and what I'm going to do is if you can see right down here we have a mini for a character so I'm gonna go ahead and select on that mini and let's just kind of move him down into the flat areas of the map just to play around with him now let's say that this is one of our players our little barbarian there, we got a good look at it, the front of him now. So here's our barbarian, and we want to have that barbarian square off against an enemy. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in whatever enemies we want to bring in. So I'm going to hit B to go into build mode, and I'm going to click up here on the creatures menu so that I can choose from all the different creatures that are available currently in this Tailspire beta. I've got several different animals to choose from, uh, an imp, a couple elementals here, a giant, some goblinoid creatures, goblins and orcs, the heroes, some monstrous enemies, some NPC choices, and some undead. So. I am going to go ahead and throw this barbarian up against something monstrous. Heck, let's do a green slime because why not? So I'm just going to drop a green slime right in there and I'm going to close out my build mode by hitting B again and let's close out this list of choices. I now have my happy little green slime right here. So green slime and the barbarian ready to square off. Now there are a few menus for both the player icon and your monsters as a DM. So if I right click on one of these minis, here's my green slime, I can adjust the hit points for him. You can either just slide up and down by clicking on this little white dot on the edge of this orange circle. I can move it up to add hit points, move it down to subtract hit points. I can also click right on the number and type in whatever value it is. So let's say that this green slime has uh, 30 hit points. Well, I also want to click on the bottom number so I can get, there we go, 30 out of 30. Now, when that green slime gets hit and damaged, I can simply click on that white dot on the orange circle, drag it down, the number of hit points. He was hit for five damage, so now he's at 25 hit points. So that's one way you can do it. Or I could have just clicked in here and typed in 25 and hit enter. Now he's at 25 hit points. So this will help you keep track of that. Additionally, when he dies, this X right here gives a kill menu. When I click on that, I can then choose to kill the creature, which will remove it from the board. I'm not gonna do that just yet. Uh, we'll see it in a moment though. I have some additional tools. Okay. There is this one that looks like a scroll for stats. When I click on this, I now have four more uh, different colored little wheels that I can work with for various stats. You can choose what you want to assign them as. Uh, currently, you cannot change the name underneath. This says, you know, stat 1, stat 2, stat 3, stat 4. You can't change those. I haven't found a way to do that. Okay. However, you can just make some basic rules for your group and say for example what I plan on doing is this blue one here stat number three 
I'm going to use that as the character speed. So let's say this green slime only moves at 20 feet per, per move action. So I'm going to click there and put 20 there. I'm also going to put it down below so it's 20 out of 20. This way I can actually use this to help me keep track of things like, oh, this slime can't move. Maybe this slime had a spell cast on it and it is now paralyzed. So its speed is now down to zero. So I see its current speed and then what its normal speed is. That's how I plan on using it. That may work for you, it may not. The choice is yours. I also plan on using this stat block uh, here, this little circle, for armor class. So let's say its armor class is 12 and its normal armor class is 12. So once again, I can use this circle to say, oh, well, what if it got partial cover? And so it got an additional, let's say, 2 AC from that. Or they cast a spell on it uh, that reduced its AC. So uh, instead of 12, it dropped it by 2, so it's now 10. So I can keep track of current armor class and what its normal armor class is. That's how I plan on using it. You can also assign to the other uh, circles, the other stat trackers here for your use. Now, at this time, rule sets have not been loaded into the game. So I cannot do anything that will actually look at these numbers and cause effects based on what dice are rolled and the, the result there compared to the numbers but I can use this to help keep track of a couple things. You can assign them however you decide. I also have some other menus here. I have some emotes. You know, just little fun things. I can be sad or wiggle. Okay, you know, hey, he spins around or he goes uh, kind of side to side. I can enable a torch in order to provide light. Kind of hard to see. You can see it light up a little bit here. But right now the map is in, you know, nice bright day, so it doesn't have as, as much of an effect. When we're in the nighttime, though, you turn on the torch, it, you can definitely see the effect. Then there is hide. Well, what if I've got a very, very sneaky slime here, and he is stealthing around, and he is hiding himself? If I click hide, the player on their screen cannot see that, uh, that icon. They can't see that mini on the map. Oh, hey, players, roll a perception check. Oh, they rolled high enough. Now I can bring this guy back. But, wait a minute, where is he? I'm going to have to go into my DM overlay by hitting tab. When I do that, I can now see there he is. And I can right-click on him and choose to reveal. So there's that. Then this last one is GM Tools. In here, I have three different choices. I can rename it, so instead of slime comma green, I'm just gonna call this um, Slimer, like in the Ghostbusters. And I can give permission for a player to actually use this or make it unique. So if I make this unique and click on that, now when I go up to my tools in the upper right and I say I want my building assets, in my normal creatures tab, I still see the slime underscore, or slime comma green creature. And if I pull one of those out, look at him here, uh, he's got 10 hit points, his stats are all 10 out of 10, Okay, and we saw his name was Slime Comma Green. But if I go to Unique Creatures, oh look, there is Slimer. And if I pull Slimer out and drop him on the board, oh, he's already there. I can only put one because he is unique. But look, there, he's got 25 out of 30 hit points currently. And oh, there's that armor class and that speed. So whatever I say make unique, those stats are there. So I can actually create some unique statted creatures, so to speak. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this Slimer here in a second, but let's close out that. 
select on him, right click, and now here you can see what happens when I say kill creature. It just disappears from the map. So that are the those are the menu choices that you have available here as a DM for a mini. Well, there was one in the tools that we didn't look at, which was give permission to a player. Well, I've got the same choices over here for these other minis, and I'm going to go ahead and say GM tools, player permissions, and I'm going to give myself permission as a player. So now, as a player, I would have the ability con to control this mini. You can see that by coming up to the upper left, and I'm going to switch my role to player. Notice, I can click on this green mini. I'm clicking, left clicking, right clicking. On right click, I get some choices, which we're going to talk about in a second. But on left click, I can't pick him up. I can't move him. But I can with my barbarian here, because I have player permissions for that barbarian. And let's move these guys a little bit back away from that tree, so we get a better view of them. And I'll have to switch back to GM to pick up and move this guy. So, there we go. Now we've got them right there. So next in my menu choices, I can actually choose to attack and do different things with my minis. So this one here, I'm currently selected on this green slime and I'm going to right click on the player. Notice I have the cross swords icon for attack. When I click on that, you get this nice little attack action that happens. Now as a player, I'm going to switch back to player. If I right click on a mini that I don't control, I can choose attack. And notice I get this, you're trying to attack Slimer. I will not actually be able to attack it until the DM gives me permission. So if I switch over to GM, I now have this Barbarian Burly tries to attack Slimer. So I go ahead and click on this plus to allow that attack to happen or this X. So yep the player rolled and they had a uh, a high enough roll to hit the AC of Slimer so I'm gonna let them attack. Boom. And it gives a nice little visual and a sound effect for your player to be able to say oh look I hit and you can you know assign damage as necessary. So with all of these little tools here, the main tip I have for the GM and for the players is that since rule sets are currently not in the game, the way you're going to have to run your game is to use some other kind of tracking system, uh, program or whatever for your characters. Just like in the olden days when we all sat around a table with a pencil, a a written out character sheet and just our dice you're gonna have to have some kind of character sheet really to track all of the different abilities spells and additional stats okay. so like here if I wanted to roll a die let's say I'm rolling for attack I just pick up my die and I roll it but since there's no rule sets in currently I don't have any additional plus or anything that looks at a bonus that is attached to the the mini I'm rolling for. So I just have to add manually in my head the bonus from my character sheet. A good example of this is when I will be running my D&D 5th edition live stream using Tailspire uh, this next Wednesday. I will have my players in here in Tailspire but they will also have their character sheets on D&D Beyond open up and they will be tracking all of the different uses of their abilities, their spells, all that stuff on D&D Beyond. And when they have to make a roll, they'll just pick up their dice, roll their die. Ooh, look at that, nat 20, awesome. Roll their dice and then add the appropriate modifier from their character sheet. So, oh look, I rolled a 20. And this is for, let's say, some kind of skill check. So my skill bonus on my sheet is a plus 6. So my total now is 26. Simple as that. But you have to incorporate that kind of actual table mentality 
with the current iteration of Tailspire in the beta. Now, once they implement rule sets, depending on how that all is going to work out, and I'm anxious to see what they do with it, uh, maybe we'll be able to create macros in here for dice rolls. Maybe we'll be able to connect up or import uh, character sheets in some fashion. I really don't know. You know, fingers crossed they've got cool stuff like that. We'll just have to wait and see. But until then, these are some of those basic tools you can use for moving characters, minis around, and the different options you have for them when it comes to all of these different little icons when you right click on the mini and the choices you can make. If you've got any questions on this, if, if it wasn't you know clear or anything, please put your questions in the comments and let me know that, uh, hey, I wasn't sure about this and I promise I will respond back with an answer and if it's still not clear, perhaps I'll need to do another video to focus on a specific area. Also, if you enjoy these videos, please give a like and subscribe and if you want to continue uh, seeing them as they come out, hit that notification bell so that those notifications come your way. And in the, the next video that I'm going to put out, I actually had one of the comments. I had mentioned that if you want to see me attempt to recreate a 2D map in Detailspire, like I kind of showed in the previous video, that this is a recreation of a 2D map, at least the best I can do. Uh, one of the commenters said, hey, I w want you to try this map. Uh, and that was, and I, forgive me if I butcher the name, I'm horrible with names, I believe the name was Nate Ng. Uh, I'm, I, I'm probably pronouncing the last name wrong, but uh, anyway, he suggested a, a map, and I will attempt to recreate that in the next video. It is a very, very large map, so it may have to be done in over the course of a few videos, because I don't want to be trying to to build this in that entire map uh, at in one shot which will probably take a, a good couple hours I'm judging based on the size of it at, at least we'll see anyway thanks for for watching the video I hope this was helpful and if you have any other questions please put them in the comments as mentioned below see you in the next video bye